Hello, hello, welcome back once again. As I'm working on exclusive software for the community here, Investors Heaven, I wanted to make a video and kind of give you a first overview, a first look of what this tool is about and also use it to analyze Alibaba. And uh, we are going to create a discounted cash flow model as well with this tool. As you will see, it's very, very simple. And uh, I wanted to make a tool of that sort in order to be able to very, very quickly analyze stocks and uh, get metrics out of them without having to dig deep into um, Excel sheets, which are very, very clunky and weird. And I wanted to have sort of like a programmatic, easy way of uh, getting all the information. I'm still working on the tool, but it's coming along well. And uh, I'd love to hear your opinion. I mean, leave me a comment below and tell me what you think about uh, the tool in its current state. I mean, it's not over yet. It's not done. But uh, the first thing we're going to examine here is the financial statements of the company. And one of the things that I wanted, I'm actually looking at Meta Platforms right now. Let me switch it to Alibaba. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to achieve with uh, this tool is uh, have, a, have a show down here, which actually tells me all the financial information in sort of like a story way. I wanted to quickly, you know, uh, glance at this and be able to find all the information I need, plus present them in a way that they, they are almost like telling me a story about the company. So let me tell you what I mean here. Let me explain what I mean and how this was designed. So you will see here that the first thing is the revenue. So it tells you what the revenues of the company are. And one of the things that I we was lacking at uh, most of the tools that I have been using in the past is uh, telling me things about the revenue growth and sometimes margins, which is what you are going to see later. So this one actually tells you what the revenue growth is uh, year over year and also what the cost of revenue is over here. And from the cost of revenue, we derive the gross profit because that's what it is. It's revenue minus uh, cost of revenue. Cost of revenue is what uh, revenue minus cost of revenue is what gross profit is. And so this actually comes down to gross profit here and also estimates a gross profit year over year growth and a gross profit margin, which is basically how much uh, gross profit we're making on our revenues. Later on, it moves on to the selling general and admin expenses and uh, research development and other expenses. And you will see here that it tells you at this line that the total operating expenses of, uh, of all of these is 7.365 billion over here. And uh, if you add those up together, uh, the total operating cost and expenses, which is total operating expenses and expenses for the cost of revenue are sitting at 16 billion. And so this gives you a full story of uh, what the cost is. It's basically this line and this line, the cost of revenue and the total operating expenses is what our total is. And also at a separate line, we're seeing here the operating income of the company, again, with uh, operating income year over year growth and the margins. And so these are all useful information that we can uh, use, uh, you know, for our understanding more about the company and seeing their financials and metrics uh, in a much more concise manner. And later on, I'm moving on to interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization. And you will see here all the information that you need for EBITDA. Um, depreciation, interest expenses, pretty much all of the expenses that the company incurs that are part of the income statement. And some other information here that can be very useful, like the earnings per share. You'll see that it's uh, increasing, for example, here, but it was decreased in the last uh, basically year because these are fiscal years over here. So the net income, which is uh, the bottom line. And for this company, Alibaba, you will see that uh, it's been growing and uh, stalling a little bit in the last uh, year in terms of growth, but it was previously growing very well. And uh, you may have heard that the company has been lacking revenues and it's, uh, it's not a growth story. And then you can look at these revenues over here and tell me whether this kind of growth uh, looks like a growth uh, company to you or not, because that's pretty good growth to my eyes. So let's move on to the balance sheet of the tool. Similarly, I wanted to make a very, very easy way to understand what are the total current assets, the total non-current assets, the current liabilities and the non-current liabilities, because I'm finding that a lot of tools are messing these things up and they, they have like an over bloated presentation that doesn't make sense. And over here, I wanted to make a presentation where it actually, if you add up all of these, you actually get the total number. So plain and simple, as uh, plain as I could uh, do it. So here, if you add all this, uh, assets, the current assets of the company, 
you derive to 26.49 billion dollars which is the current which are the current assets of uh, Alibaba here for 2017 that is and you will see that they have been growing to 97.91 uh, billion over here now I have been contemplating about adding um, uh, growth over here I may add this line as well uh, just the the growth of the total current assets and as well for the other ones but i do have it for some some of the more important things like the total investments the stockholders equity the total liabilities things of that sort but uh, again this is a little bit of uh, potential work to be done and some things to be added but it, it still gives gives me a nice overview of how the company has been doing and you will see here that they have been growing their current assets uh, quite well and uh, like, similar with uh, non-current assets, again, you can pretty much add all those together and get uh, the total non-current assets value per year. Current and non-current assets being the ones that can be liquidated uh, in the next 12 months, like short-term liquidation for the current assets, and non-current assets cannot be liquidated very quickly because they are like long-term investments, for example. And uh, current liabilities are uh, again can be added together and you can uh, derive this number and uh, went from 13 billion to 57 billion it's normal that they grow with the assets of course and uh, total non-current liabilities similarly you can add those together and get to this line which is 36 billion dollars of non-current liabilities currently and you will see that the, the total investments of the company also growing over here and uh, also you will see the retain, retained earnings, additional paid in capital, which is a line that is very, very interesting and important because we can see how much, uh, you know, how stockholders have been uh, financing the company with money just by buying their stock. And uh, you will also see that there has been some growth in stockholders equity, for instance. Uh, the, the total debt of the company is another thing that you can see here and how it's been growing year over year and the net debt as well, which uh, typically you want to see it in the negative. Okay, the total assets of the company is a combination of the total, uh, the total current assets, current assets and the total non-current assets basically. Same with uh, the total liabilities, it's a combination of the current liabilities and the non-current liabilities and this gives you the numbers. And the total equity is a, sub a subtraction between the total assets minus total liabilities is what the total equity is and you'll see it increasing over here as well as stockholders equity. And again, I may add uh, some, some more year-over-year -year growths in this, like the total equity, for example, or the total stockholders' equity. Uh, again, if people ask me to add more things, I could potentially add um, custom information, um, depending on what we need to examine here. Uh, I feel that this is a pretty nice representation. So, the cash flow statement, the cash flow operating activities here, again, same, same idea. I want to have it in a, in a manner where you can actually add the numbers together and derive to the net cash uh, provided by operating activities here and uh, likewise the cash from investing activities and you will see that the operating activities cash is increasing very nicely as well and uh, the year over year growth is pretty neat and the investing activities are uh, minus and they, you want them to be in the minus so this kind of growth uh, probably may not even be making a lot of sense here this may be a line that I may want to remove because you do want to see negative numbers here. It's a good, it's a good thing because it means that the company is investing in, uh, in, their, in their own stuff or their purchases of investments and things of that sort. And the very, very nice thing about this kind of use, you can see exactly what they're investing here. And again, like add those things up. You will see, you will see that the company purchased investments here and exactly how much. And um, it invested in, in, in property, plant and equipment, for example, in 2021 and 2020. Very, very useful. And cash from financing activities, what, uh, what is the company financing operations with or just basically getting some extra cash with. And uh, you'll see here some issuance of common stock and this uh, number here tells you that there was a lot of insurance, issuance of common stock in 2020. So that's something to bear in mind and you may not like too much. Very, very, very quickly to see, uh, very easy to see actually here that the company is issuing shares just by looking at the common stock uh, growth over here. The net cash prov provided by financing activities. Uh, now this uh, percentage may make a little bit more sense. Uh, it, does, it does show you the growth because you may want to see a company being more negative than positive here. Just because um, the more negative you are, the less debt you have because you are paying back debt when numbers are negative in financing activities. So uh, the cash position of the company, uh, cash at the end of the period and cash at the beginning of period and then it changes in cash. You'll see here 
the numbers and the net, uh, net change in cash, uh, the percentage uh, change. And the free cash flow growth and the free cash flow is uh, the bottom line of this uh, cash flow statement, which I think is the most important thing. And this is why at the very bottom here. And uh, what is that? Is uh, operating activities uh, cash, operating income that is, minus your capital expenditures, minus this line. So 11 minus 2.5, 11.6. We're getting this number, 9.1. And then you will see how the free cash flow, flow, cash flow grows over the years. And uh, 2021 was pretty good as well with a 40% uh, free cash flow growth from 2020. Very neat. And next, I want to show you the stock evaluation tool of uh, this um, tool, basically, of this uh, platform. And this tells you the information that you need about, um, about your assessments here in a very, very concise manner. And um, this free cash flow, actually discounted cash flow model that we're going to be using, is actually working on revenue, net income and free cash flow and uses margins of those things. Uh, uses the net income margin and the free cash flow margin, which is, um, it's not exactly free cash flow margin, it's actually margin of the net income. And so it's a ratio of that. And um, you have these numbers here to quickly tell you a story and you can see what the company has been doing. And also I have the five year average so that you can quickly glance at that. But when you're doing your projections here, you do have the averages uh, in a very, very handy uh, table here and your projections that you want to be making here for the company. So what do, you want, do we want to do here? We want to examine, we want to uh, put, um, picture what the company will be doing in the next five years. This is a five year uh, cash flow model here, discounted cash flow model. And so, uh, this will be some estimates that we're gonna making. We're gonna, we're gonna be making, and the low ones are gonna be the conservative ones. The high ones are gonna be the less conservative ones, the more um, you know, the more offensive ones, I guess, the more um, uh, you know, the more optimistic ones, I should say. And the medium ones, I guess, are the average ones. So, if we're looking at the company here, we'll see that the revenue growth of the company has a five-year average of forty-eight percent, a three-year average of forty-two percent, and a last year of 40.72% is what the revenue growth has been in the last five years. So for my low estimates, I want to be conservative and I'm going to go with something like 15% for my low estimates again. It's very, very conservative, but that's what you need to be doing because we're talking about the next five years and it gives us a margin of safety if we're conservative. And in, in the medium one, we can be less conservative. We can go with 20% of uh, revenue growth. And in the high one, we can go with even less conservative, 25. And you could use all sorts of numbers, like when you're obviously trying numbers with this tool, because it can give you projections for everything. The net income margin, which is basically how much net income we're keeping of that revenue. And so if you see here, the net income is 6.34 billion and the revenue is 23 billion. So 6 billion out of 23 billion is basically 27% of that. So 27, 27.5% of the revenue is net income, is what we're saying here. And so the margins of the company, again, have been 25% for the last five years, 24 for the last three, and last year they were 21. So for a net income margin for our low projections, we're going to go with something like 18. We're going to be safe. And the medium is going to be 20. The high, we can go 22. And we're still below what, we, what the three-year average is. You can, you can be even more you know, optimistic again with your projections. The free cash flow margin is basically the free cash flow compared to the net income is what it is. And uh, this kind of tells us how much uh, our profitability leads to free cash flow. And so $9 billion of uh, net income, which is all the income that we got after all the expenses the company has, including taxes. And uh, we get a ratio of uh, the free cash flow over the net income. And this gives us 125% over here for the last five years. And 110% for the last three years, 125% for last year. Though. So it was actually better than all of the previous years. And um, with this, uh, we can also, uh, you know, bring free cash flow into play and actually correlate it with the net income of the, that the company makes. And you will see here that uh, with Alibaba, again, it's like typical 10 billion here, 15 billion uh, of uh, free cash flow, 13 billion, 15 billion, 21, 19. That was a little bit of a drop here. So. You are, you are getting the point. This is how it works and it kind of tries to derive uh, profitability, free cash flow based on the profitability of the company. 
and uh, the, the starting point is of course uh, the revenues and then the net income. So we're using all this information to project into the future. And the free cash flow margin that we're going to be using is uh, for our low estimates, we're going to go with, uh, let's just say 118%, actually no, let's go with 110, which is the lowest here. And then we're going to go 120 and then just be a little bit more aggressive. Let's go 130 for a high one. And the annual return is basically our discount rate is how much we're going to be making every year on our investment here. And uh, typically I want to be at around uh, 13% just because um, I every, you can get uh, like the S&P 500 ETF and just get 10% a year. So I want uh, more than that if I'm going to invest in a single stock. And so I'm going to go with 13% for all of those actually. Same thing. And I'm going to hit calculate here. And this uh, gives me the estimates here, the projection results for Alibaba. The max price to pay today for our low estimates here, which again, you can see what they were, is uh, $200. And the medium estimates are 295 for these values over here. Our high estimates are 425 and the current price of the stock is 100. So all of these are a pass here. Uh, again, this is the max price to pay today in order to achieve 13% annual return. That's what it is. So. If you're looking at these estimates, you are paying, you can pay up to $200. If you're looking at these estimates, you can pay up to $295. And if you're looking at these estimates, you can pay up to $425. But obviously, the lower you are, the more money you are potentially like to, likely to achieve into the future, right? Uh, just because you're buying at a discount. So uh, simple as that. And so currently it's sitting at $100 and it's uh, actually 50% down of our lowest estimates here, which were pretty low, I guess. Oh, I mean, 15% revenue, 50% revenue growth is what we used here. It's pretty low. So we could go overboard here and even try 30%, for instance, even our high here, for, instance, for example. We can actually try that very quickly and calculate it. Now you will see this value change then went to 511 here, just because it's now 30% in revenue growth. And you can, you can obviously play with all these and uh, you know, get different estimates for different scenarios is the idea here. <clears throat> so hopefully that uh, gives you a quick overview of the tool. And uh, this is something that I always wanted to create because again, it gives me a very, very easy way to uh, evaluate uh, companies. And I'm still working on this, still creating a lot, a lot more content for the, for the tool because there is uh, other um, metrics that I want to be examining and other ways to examine metrics and uh, have a checklist of things which is what I'm doing next. And um, in the next video, I'm gonna show you about the stock analysis and the stock news and all that, and all the other things that I'm working on uh, right now for the tool. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh, if you haven't watched the discounted cash flow for Alibaba earlier, now you have, because this is exactly what it was over here. So again, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you liked it, because uh, that really, really helps uh, with bringing more people to the channel, bringing them over, what's the content. I think it's gonna be beneficial for value investors. And uh, if you are not a subscriber already, you may want to be one, cause at some point I'm gonna be giving access to people on this tool. So you may want to be around uh, when that happens, if you, if you like this type of uh, content and this type of tools. So thanks for watching this one and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.